patents, basically intellectual dibs. They're a way for someone who has a unique idea to claim it. Now you might think, for better or worse, every idea has been thought of, but you'd be dead wrong. Some patents make no sense, like Amazon's parcel tossing machine. There's no need for that when Hermes have the market covered. Others could win a godlike genius award, like Nike's Back to the Future shoes. Shut up and take my money. Oh, and while we're on it, where the fuck's my hoverboard? In this video, I'm gonna look at some of the weirdest patents that tech giants have filled out in the last couple of years to try and understand why they'd even bother paying money to call dibs on such a stupid invention. Part one, why would anyone patent this idea? The most obvious reason is to protect your idea. And why wouldn't you wanna protect your beehive drone concept? Take that shit on Dragon's Den and even Sarah Davies will give you an offer. But beyond protecting an idea, a patent tells us how a person or a company views the future. Take Spotify's parking suggestion patent. This tells me that at some point in the future, they're gonna pay Joe Rogan to whisper sweet motivational quotes into my ear when I'm not sure if my car can fit into a tiny space. Joe, do you think I can get in this parking space? It doesn't even seem humanly possible. It's worth noting that just because someone has taken out a patent doesn't mean they're ever gonna develop it or have it made. It just means they've called dibs on the idea so that no one else can do it. And if they want to do something similar, they'll have to pay them a royalty. Which is kind of worrying when you think that more than one person might have thought this lie detecting throat tattoo was a good idea. Part two, how do patents work? A patent is broken down into several parts. The abstract, a summary, a background section, illustrations, and a little section called claims. The most important part of your dibs is the claims that you're making. This is the section where you can list anything new or innovative that your idea does. Like, Google have this patent for a virtual assistant that tweets for you. Here, the unique selling point is that you don't have to hire a teenager of Fiverr.com. Companies try to file a patent as early as possible in the life of an idea to ensure it's theirs and nobody else can touch it. This is why so many of the ideas feel a little half-baked. Part three, news coverage of patents. In the past, you would have filed a patent and not given it a second's thought. All press is good press, and for the most part, even your mum didn't give a shit about your great idea. Journalists need to find things to write about because the antiquated publications they work for need our clicks in order to earn money. This is why there are so many shocking headlines like, Sony wants to let you skip commercials, but only if you stand up and shout the brand's name at your TV. Illustrated here by this stick man shouting McDonald's. I'm not loving it. So why would a company want to patent a half-baked idea that could lead to bad PR? Well, often they're just trying to cover all their bases. Ah! Like when a dog pisses in every bush in the park to let all the bitches know that he's horny. And sometimes a company is just being defensive. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's an airborne fulfillment center. It's highly unlikely that Amazon will ever develop the delivery blimp, but now that they have the patent for it, none of their competitors can either. Although it is a good way for Bezos to avoid the land value tax. Rain on me, daddy Bezos, rain on me. As long as you have the budget, because patents are not cheap, they can cost up to 10,000 pounds. There are massive offensive and defensive incentives for companies to file them. Nailed it. Speaking of budgets, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel for more content. Also, you can support me by becoming an internet explorer via my subreddit or Patreon. Both of those are linked below. What? It's a cheap plug. But patents don't just offer clickbait for BuzzFeed journalists. You won't believe what's coming next. Part four, other advantages of patents. Charles Dunn, a patent expert at R Street Institute said, if two giant companies want to cut a deal that involves their patent portfolio, nobody is gonna go through them all to analyze if every patent is actually useful or original, since that can cost thousands of dollars in legal fees. Usually the company with the most patents ends up getting bought for the most money. So much like most metal music, it's based on volume and not quality. They're a hypothetical land grab, but not everybody thinks like that. Here's the walking meme Elon Musk explaining why he made all of his car patents open source. So if somebody comes and makes a better electric car and it's, it's so much better than ours that we can't sell our cars and, and we go bankrupt, I still think that's a good thing for the world. The overarching goal of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. So if we created a patent portfolio that discouraged other companies from making electric cars, they would be inconsistent with our mission. So we open sourced all the patents uh, in order to help anyone else who wants to make an electric car. I think true competitive advantage on technology front is more about your rate of innovation than it is the degree to which you're slowing others down. However, he doesn't see it that way in every business he runs. 
Elon told Chris Anderson at Wired magazine, we have essentially no patents in SpaceX. Our primary long-term competitor is China. If we publish patents, it would be farcical because the Chinese would just use those as a recipe book. Uh, yeah, I'll have a Tesla Model 3 with a side of rice, part five. So what's the big issue? Patents have as many issues as Jay-Z has problems. Firstly, they're written in a way that nobody understands them. No, really, I'm not pretending that only smart people can read them. It's just the way they're constructed. Stanford law expert Lisa Olet wrote an article for Science Magazine on this exact subject, and I barely understood that. So how am I meant to understand the patent she's talking about? The issue here is that patents are written in what is known as prophetic terms. This means, much like most self-published erotica, you can be as specific as you like, but every word has to be fiction and written in the present tense. So I could patent my idea of a hoover that picks up dog shit for me, the poover, naturally, and claim that it's 26% more effective for those using it over the age of 51. This issue means that when journalists, scientists, or insomniac comedians read them at 3 a.m., they can't tell what has been made and tested and what's just two steps up from Harry Potter fan fiction erotica. Which, by the way, there is an alarming amount on the internet, and not all of that makes any sense either. Images are just as problematic, which you'll know if you've ever Googled Blue Waffle. Don't do it. In her article, Lisa says, it's important to note that the pictures in a patent often don't give you a great sense of what the patent actually covers. It's basically catfishing. The image could be photoshopped like crazy or drawn on the back of a fag packet, like this patent I filed for a pen that could help you easily write patents on the back of fag packets. Take the Amazon worker cage patent, something you all knew deep down really existed but were secretly hoping wasn't a thing. Don't get me wrong, that image scares the shit out of me. But if you control F through the patent, Amazon actually never uses the word cage. But interestingly, they do use the word nipple six times but I'm guessing they overlooked that because the headline wasn't as catchy? Because this was so unclear, it led to massive outrage on usually level-headed platform Twitter. And Dave Clark, Amazon's CEO of Worldwide Consumer, a job title so vague it might as well be CEO of Big Business Incorporated, to tweet, Sometimes even bad ideas get submitted for patents. This was never used and we have no plans for its usage. We developed a far better solution, which the small vest associates can wear that stop all robotic drive units in their proximity to stop moving. Reassuring, I'm sure you'll agree. Methinks someone has started using Google's auto PR tweeting patent tool. The bigger issue here is that increasingly people don't trust big tech. And as a result, they're having to be more careful in how they word things in a patent. This is why the patent for Google's gaze tracking system got pushed back. Do you really want Google knowing exactly what you looked at and for how long for? Perverts. Anyway, here's some creepy patents I found that could easily become episodes of Black Mirror. Facebook has said it doesn't use location data to make friend suggestions. However, that doesn't mean they don't have other ways of making recommendations to you. One patent uses wireless signals in your phone to know who's around you to know who to suggest you might want to become friends with. And another analyzes dust on your camera lens to work out if the photos you've taken and uploaded to Facebook were taken in the same room as someone else. What a time to be alive. Google wants to track your baby's heart rate using a Nest camera as a supercharged baby monitor. I guess they need to normalize this early because the idea of a Google device tracking my sleep is enough to keep me up all night long. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the creepiest big tech of them all? Why, it's Amazon, of course. Who have a patent for a mirror that could blend reality by overlaying images onto your face in the reflection. Cool. Now, how do I remove a carrot from my butt? Go see a doctor.